what is going on guys welcome back to another episode um in this episode it's gonna be a little bit different as you guys know my camera girl summer is standing next to me the camera is actually on tripods because i do need her help with this uh, this is actually something we normally do every three to four months uh, that time has come up again uh, it's kind of a reoccurring not so much a problem just something we have to always do so in this episode we were talking about mistex and cloacas that's right, I said it. Okay, so for those of you guys that don't know what a cloaca is, you, you wanna do this? Yeah, it's pretty much the all-in-one hole, as Summer said. Um, so birds have cloacas, reptiles have cloacas. They pretty much have their poop chute and their breeding utensils in the same hole. Um, <laughs> poop shoots. <laughs> poop shoots, yeah. Um, I, I gotta make it, you know, kid friendly. So, um, what, what was it you called it when the birds mate? The cloacal kiss? Yeah. Yeah, the cloacal kiss. kiss. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how most reptiles and birds, well, that's how they all pretty much do it. So, with this, um, just how people kind of get UTIs and, and other animals can get UTIs and stuff like that. This can also happen with birds and reptiles. Uh, we had a previous parrot we both worked with um, at a zoo we actually met at. Uh, his cloaca was always like inflamed and just not good. And he was given every antibiotic he could. Um, and it, he was getting, what, weekly vet checks and stuff like that. And it's still kind of never got better. Um, didn't kill him, he's still alive to my knowledge, but in this episode, Miss Tex, which is our big Western Diamondback Rattlesnake, um, ever since I got her, she's had kind of a cloacal issue, and about every three to four months, we just take her out and clean it, hence the tripod, Summer helps me with this. So we're gonna pull her out now, we're actually gonna be able to stick her in a tube. Um, I have a cup with chlorhexidine in it right now, um, also with some water, so it's a little diluted. I have two uh, Q-tips, thank you. Q-tips sitting in um, that, so they're kind of just soaking up the chlorhexidine. Uh, you ready? Sure. Sure, it doesn't sound like you're ready. So are you gonna tube her? I'm gonna take her out, we'll put her on here. And tube her. So, like Will said, we have our tubes right here, and what we did well, let me see this one, is we pulled out this one, so they all kind of come in different sizes for different, different snakes. Um, so this should be the right size for her, so what we're going to do is get her in it, and then if need be that she needs a smaller one, she can go through, and then that way you can hold kind of two thirds up their body and hold the snake in here so they can't back out and have your hand on the tube and the snake. Um, definitely good for restraining venomous, especially so nobody gets injured or bit or whatever. It kind of makes it safer because they can't back out of the tube. Um, and I guess just a good restraining tool for them. It's a process getting them in there though. Yeah. So apparently we have a lot of issues with dying cameras. I guess this thing eats up batteries pretty quick. Good thing I have like six. Alright, so uh, what I was saying before the camera died, um, normally we do this on the ground. It's a lot easier for the snake, especially when they're backed up into a corner. Um, they can't necessarily back out of the tube. So we're going to actually go ahead and put her on the ground. You're not going to be able to see this part, unfortunately, because the camera again is on a tripod and I'm going to need Summer's help as soon as I get done getting him in the tube. Would you stop? You cannot eat the rattlesnake. I know you want to, but you cannot.
Perfect. Okay, so she's in as far as she's gonna go. So Summer's gonna take over now. what they usually use to scrub down um, before vet procedures for a lot of stuff. It's like that blue. Um, well, obviously it's blue. You can see it. I want to use It's a very good antiseptic, antibacterial. Use it for a lot of stuff. Some places actually use it for like cleaning too. So. So I know this is very hard for you guys to see what we're doing. But in a minute, I'll bring her over there so you guys can. Good. So basically, what I'm doing is trying to open it up as much as possible, try and get it as clean as possible. Let's bring her over here. Sorry, I'm kind of focusing, not really talking. So. That is her cloaca. As you can see, it's very dark, um, swollen, kind of. That's how she's always been. Um, there's nothing wrong with her. I've had it looked at at a vet, but I just like to make sure it's nice and clean every so often, and that's why I said we do this every couple of months. So. And I th at first, I thought it was when I first got her, I thought it was maybe because I was keeping her on mulch. And then I realized after that that was not the case at all. Now, for those of you wondering if I've ever been pooped on by doing this, I'm going to let you figure out the answer to that. I mean, it's true. I'm sitting here playing with a snake butt. And then too, when you hold them in the tube, you don't really squeeze. It's just enough since they're one pretty much big muscle, uh, just enough where they can go forward and shoot out the front or move back. But that's why you put a good amount of their body in it too. It helps kind of stabilize them. Puppy, would you stop? He's really trying to get at her. You act like I don't feed you or something. What? Go ahead and tell him about healed scales. Well, we've talked about healed scales before. Yeah. Alright, so now that I got it nice and in there, just taking a dry q tip, kind of rubbing it all over. Trying to get off whatever dead skin and debris that is on there. So it's kind of, um, she's almost built up a callus over the swollen part um, from it constantly rubbing on bedding and different things. She's got squeezing that bubble tight. Um, so yeah, so there's a rough, rough skin patch on that that uh, has just built up over time, and I could pull it off her, but I'd rather not try and I could possibly injure her further, and I really don't want to do that. So now it's all nice and dry. Puppy, bro, stop. All right. All right, so. So, nice and clean, close up of a, well, focus, focus, so rattlesnake tail, cloaca again, and then the keeled scales, which are the raised scales on the back. 
But now that she's done, Summer, if you'd do me the pleasure of please opening that second to last drawer. Yep. So as you can see in the tube, nice and safe. I can put my face next to her, nothing happens. So these are a really essential tool when it comes to owning venomous, especially with the amount of venomous we have and things we have to deal with. it we kind of wanted this is, I figured it was going to be a short video but we wanted to kind of go over with you guys my head's not even in camera there we go just kind of go over with you guys um, something we normally do this is part of the process of owning these animals is upkeep. different upkeep and procedures would you stop you know, he, he ate two rats today and he's still trying to eat a rattlesnake but yeah so that's part of keeping all a lot of these animals is paying attention to little details like that will expand the life of your reptiles or animals in that matter because i mean everything needs a close eye to it um but yeah i think that's it you want to go over anything else no that's pretty much it summer hates being on camera yeah, yeah. but all right guys that's gonna be it for this one hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully you learned something new because that is the point of all of these videos i think yeah yeah okay see you in the next one bye